Xiaomi's Mi Notebook Air 13 gets another revision. This is the second revision and the third model now, 2018, sees the introduction of the KB Lake R CPUs in this line. So we now have the Core i5-8250U, the i7-8550U, 8 gigabytes of RAM, and there is a 16 gigabyte model that's in the works. It's apparently coming out within a month or so or after the Chinese Spring Festival. Now this model here you can see has another couple of changes too. The obvious being the fact that it's now in this deep grey colour, which is a good move if you ask me, because the paint job on the Mi Notebook Pro does look really good. And this here to me makes it look a little bit more professional. I do like the darker colour on here versus the silver. Now it will show up fingerprints a little more because of that darker colour on the lid you'll see. Um, a few little smudges and things once you start handling it and using it for a few days. Now the lid has no logos on it whatsoever, so very plain, minimalistic design, which I really do like. The build quality is excellent. This is really well put together, the fit and finish. There's no rough edges or anything like that. Uh, the edges on the bottom could be perhaps a little less sharp than what they are, but they're not too bad overall. Really no complaints with that. Now you will notice that there was another change too, that's to the internals. So we still have the MX150 GPU from NVIDIA, which is basically a 1030. It's got two gigabytes of RAM, uh, double data rate, five spec. Now this has 384 CUDA cores in it. Now speaking of thermals, if we have a look, you can see that we do have now these new cooling fins on the two coolers there. So we still have the same setup, unfortunately, as the previous model. So it's a smaller fan paired up with a larger fan. They've put more fins on those fans though, so it's moving a lot more air through it. And, and you can see also that the copper heat transfer pipe, this is a little bit wider. Now, thermals have improved. Now when I reviewed the previous models, they got up to 50 degrees Celsius to the touch, which I would classify as quite hot for one of these notebooks. And now it gets up to about 46. So yes, it has definitely improved the cooling. Physically to touch it, it's not as hot as it normally gets while in the previous models there. But it also internally, it only maxes out at 82 degrees because of the improved cooling. So it's handling a two, two more cores now compared to the previous models, which are only dual cores. This, of course, is now quad. So performance is up about 30%. But I'll get into that later on. But just to let you know here at the start that, uh, that Xiaomi has limited a little bit the potential of the CPU due to setting a thermal throttling limit quite low to stop it going above 82 degrees. So there's some limitation there on the performance of this particular notebook. Now the keyboard is the same layout, the same key travel, so 1.26 millimeters of key travel that I measured. A comfortable keyboard to type on. It's not as good as the Mi Notebook Pro's keyboard, however, those keys are just slightly higher quality, it gives you a little bit better feedback on it. But overall, a very decent keyboard. Now it is better than the previous year's keyboard because they've used the black plastic, meaning that you can actually see the backlit keyboard better than the silver keys on the earlier versions. And they've also used a slightly better quality plastic on here, and the keys don't feel as sharp on the edges as they did on the previous two generations of this particular model. Now you also note that the power button is probably where the delete key should be, but it does have a higher resistance to it. So if you accidentally tap that, hopefully it won't put it into sleep. But of course you can set in Windows uh, this button to do nothing when you touch it. And that solves that minor little issue there. Now the touchpad, the same size, but it's no longer with synaptic drivers like the first two models. This is now Windows Precision Drivers full control over gestures, and overall, it's a step up from the trackpad from last year's. Uh, quite accurate, very good to use, and the fingerprint reader also works when you touch it using the touchpad. So sometimes on some models, when you put your finger over the fingerprint readers, it doesn't register when you're moving the cursor around, but this one here, it does. Now that fingerprint reader works flawlessly, very quick using Windows Hello to log into Windows just to point out that the intake is here for the fans. So if you happen to use this on your lap, you will end up blocking that and then the fan noise will increase and it will start to heat up. So not a laptop to be using on your lap. So on the right hand side, we have a status LED. Now this will light up red when charging, turn green once it's fully charged to let you know. Now charging time is blazing fast on this notebook. It only takes one hour and 38 minutes to fully charge this. It's really good, so it charges at really high rates. 
and probably one of the fastest, in fact, the fastest I have tested out here on the channel. Now we have a, a USB type C port here. So this support supports resolutions up to 4K 60 Hertz. We've got charging data at the same time as well with this port and then a USB 3 port there. Now on the left side here, we have HDMI out. Now it is not HDMI 2 spec, which I feel it should be. So this does not support 4K 60 Hertz. It maxes out at 4K 30 Hertz, the output from this. And then we have another USB 3 port. By the way, the USB 3 ports will power external hard drives up to two terabytes tested without any issues. A 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, which supports microphones. Very clear audio out of this, no static, no interference. So the screen is a 13.3 inch IPS panel. It's fully laminated with scratch resistant glass. Blacks are deep, colors look great. No complaints with the screen, I feel it is fine. The maximum brightness tops out at 291 lux, which isn't super bright, but it's perfectly fine for indoors, even in brightly lit environments right now with two powerful studio lights on. The screen is set to 50% and you can make it out perfectly fine. Normally I just run with about 30% most of the time uh, in the studio and at home without any problems. Now the screen to me, looks better than the Mi Notebook Pro screen. That's 15.6 inches and still 1080p. And you can see the pixels on that one. Here you can see the pixels if you look at it really, really close, but it's not as bad as the Pros. Now up the top, you'll see we've got a webcam. Now this is 720p 30 frames per second max that you can record on it. Skype calls look great. You've got dual array microphones that pick up sound really well. Now this webcam, just to point out, does not support Windows Hello. One thing to note that when you first get it, depending on where you buy it from, that it should come with Windows 10 Home in Chinese only. Now you cannot just go and add an English language pack to that. It doesn't seem to work. The easiest way that I found, and it retains the recovery image and keeps that all intact, and the default software configuration and all that software from Xiaomi, is just to upgrade it from Windows 10 Home to Pro. You can pick up CD keys, uh, very cheap for that, and this is what I did with my unit. So I upgraded, and that way if I go to reset this PC later on, it will just actually add that language. So I added US, and now that's part of the image, and when you do the recovery and everything like that, it'll pull through. So it's good for resale value. You can, of course, go ahead and just do a complete clean and new install of Windows 10 Home and the CD key in the BIOS that will pull through, so you don't need to spend any extra cash on that if that is your preference there. So having a look now just at what we have under the device manager. So we've got the Intel Core i5-8250U. Now this is a quad-core processor. It's multi-threaded, so that's why it shows up in there eight times. Wireless is Intel's dual-band wireless AC8265, a very good chipset there, very fast. That also handles our Bluetooth as well on that Bluetooth 4.1. Then we have a Samsung PN961. That's an MVME drive, very fast. I'll show you that later on. And the graphics, so you can see two graphics here. That's because we have the integrated graphics that it uses when it's not doing anything demanding. And if you happen to be video editing or gaming or something like that, then it will switch over and use the GeForce, which is that MX150 from NVIDIA. And lastly here, the fingerprint reader is an ELAN one that works perfectly fine. Now, if we look at the memory spec here, we've got eight gigabytes of double data rate for RAM running in 2400 megahertz. That is perfectly fine, but what isn't so great is this right here. It's only running in single channel, so we are missing out on some memory bandwidth and performance there. Still on the topic of performance, here we have the Geekbench 4 score. So this to me is not the best, of course, from this chipset. And the reason why that is, is either two things. It's either the early thermal throttling that this CPU has that Xiaomi have configured it to do quite early on. I'll get onto that later on in this review. Or it's just the fact that it doesn't have dual channel RAM. So that's why it's a little bit lower because I've seen before around 4,000 for the single core score and about another 1,000 ports is so higher as well here on the multi-core score. But still, this score right here, that is up around 30 to 35% over the previous generation. So it's quite a step up in terms of of just raw CPU performance there. Here is the OpenCL score. Now this score here, I did run the GPU slightly overclocked. If you want more details on that, check out my gaming review 
of this particular laptop. And we have a look at the Firestrike 1.1 score. So this is the stock score here, so 2,640. Keep an eye on that graphics score there. So that's 2,899 because later on it went in overclocked. And you can boost that score up a little bit there, you can see. I'm taking a quick look at that dedicated GPU. So it has two gigabytes of dedicated double data rate 5 RAM, which is not a lot, but considering it's only a 1080p display, we're not going to really run into many problems with the VRAM, the amount we have on there, unless, of course, you decide to try and run 4K or 1440p, which really I would not be doing anyway with this GPU because it's simply not powerful enough to really be able to do that well with games, unless, of course, it's a really old title you're running. It has a 384 CUDA cores. I'm taking a look at a few other benchmarks that I ran. You can compare these to my reviews of the previous generation model if you'd like. So here we have Cinebench. Now this score is up quite a bit. This is up around about almost 200 points on the CPU. Thanks to, of course, the faster CPU we've got on there with two extra cores. It makes a big difference in multi-threaded benchmarks. And here we have the Heaven score. So this is a little bit lower than the Mean Notebook Pro. The Mean Notebook Pro got 7,407. So the difference of this is because of those lower GPU clocks that I just mentioned and showed you before with uh, GPU Z there. Pass mark rating, so 3,702 is not a bad rating at all considering that this is really an ultra book, how thin and light this is. It's got some decent power, so it's packing a bit of performance here too. And here are the speeds of that Samsung PM961 SSD, so 256 gigabytes. It is really blazing fast. Look at those read speeds. So no bottlenecks whatsoever here with the storage performance. Now this is the wireless here. So I was transferring some files over my own network at home, wireless AC, and it was up to around about 75 megabytes per second, which translates into 600 megabits per second. So very fast, the Intel Wireless AC8265 chipset it has on here. Now, not the fastest results I've actually seen out of this chipset. I've seen almost as high as 700 uh, megabits per second. So it's only just marginally slower there. So just like the two previous models to this one, we've got downward firing speakers. They are tuned by AKG and there's no changes to them whatsoever. They're decent sounding speakers for an Ultrabook, a laptop of this size. There's no sub, so it's just the two speakers, and it does also come with Dolby Audio software. Now this software is basically just like an equalizer. It lets you tweak and adjust the sound to your own personal preference there. I'll give you a sample of them now at 100% volume. onto battery life now. So really no improvements here over the previous generation as expected because we've got two more cores to feed. And the other thing is the battery capacity has not increased from the relatively small 39 watt hour battery because considering the hardware this has got on here, it should be larger this battery, but of course they've made no changes internally to cater for a larger battery size there. Now in my test, I ran the brightness at 30%. I had wireless on the whole time. I was using Chrome with about eight tabs. And you can see here that I, after four hours and 38 minutes, lost about 65% battery there. So you're looking like the estimate here, around six hours, six hours, 30 minutes. Uh, if you are using the dedicated GPU, you're gaming or doing something else, you can only expect around two hours, two and a half hours of battery life when you're doing something super demanding, 100% brightness. If you're watching videos, it's different. So if you were just cycling and watching a video in 1080p, then you can probably expect about seven to eight hours. It's a lot more there. But overall, battery life is, for me, disappointing. Moving on now to have a look at encoding 4K video. So I have Adobe Premiere Pro here. And as long as you don't have a huge amount of different videos in here, like you're not trying to put uh, 100 clips in here with the 8 gigabytes of RAM. I found that editing 4K video is perfectly fine with this hardware. That the preview screen there, you can see that's in real time. It doesn't have any slowdown. You can apply your filters and whatnot and other things. As long as you keep things basic. I mean, not too basic, but don't just start to pile on things because it will start to bog down a little bit there. And I think some of the problem really comes down to the RAM. But again, uh, with that thermal throttling that you can see 
has been happening quite a bit. It's been bouncing off that all the time, and that, of course, is lowering the CPU turbo, the speeds of the turbo there at times. Now, I'm going to do the same encoding test I've done on the previous models and the Pro model. And it managed to encode one minute of 4K footage and do it in five minutes and one second on the Pro version. So let's have a look with the same hardware, by the way. Let's have a look and see how long it's going to take on this particular model. So I'm going with the same preset. It's the YouTube 4K preset here. And it's one minute of footage. Let's get this exported now. So as soon as I click this export, I'll start the timer as well. Okay, so that's about to finish up. But I won't stop the timer until it actually closes this little bar here, the encode time. It's looking like it's actually going to be about the same as the Pro model with the same exact hardware, which has surprised me a little bit. That was five minutes and one second. And there we go. Pretty much exactly the same there. So I did not expect that result, which is good in a way to see. So now to just show you where this notebook is really quite bad is that thermal throttling that happens. So when you're pushing both the GPU and the CPU, while the CPU is not actually being pushed too hard when you have a look at the utilization here, it's only at about 30%. But look at this, the whole time it is... Thermal throttling, you can see the history here. It's been thermal throttling continuously because of the GPU. So the GPU is being pushed quite hard at the moment with this benchmark there running in the background. And if we just show you the um, clocks as well on the GPU, you can see here that, yes, it's been going up and down a little bit. It's not too bad, those clocks, but I have noticed that it does tend to clock down a little bit lower than the Mi Notebook Pro with the exact same configuration here. So not great at all to see. If you play another game, for example, something that's using the CPU a lot more, calculating physics and things, then you're going to see just continual thermal throttling and the clocks, they will not clock up that high, those turbos affecting, of course, that CPU performance. So for me, this is not great to see because the Mi Notebook Pro, that model, I didn't have any problems with thermal throttling. The cooling could keep up with everything. But here, Xiaomi has to limit the CPU, they have to put on that early thermal throttling just to stop it from overheating because if they did not do this, if it did not trigger the thermal throttling, I can see this getting up to 90 degrees, if not even more, if you're taxing both GPU and CPU. So not at all good to see this. Now when it comes to fan noise on the Mi Notebook Air 13, I find that it could actually be sometimes a little louder than the previous generation because it's having to deal with that extra heat being generated from the CPU. Now light tasks like web browsing, you don't hear the fans. They do not come on or it might just come on low and then it later turns off. But when you do anything moderately demanding, so if it's just a little bit of photo editing, or even when you start to run quite a few tabs in Chrome, you will hear the fans come on. Now I'll give you a sample now of 100% load and the fans at 100%, that it is reasonably loud. So what is it like at gaming? Well, it's actually not too bad considering the hardware, considering we've only got two gigabytes of dedicated double data rate five RAM on this. And it's an entry level GPU here, but it's so much better than the integrated graphics solution. So you can play a lot of the modern titles. In fact, everything is playable out there. You just need to lower down the settings. So often you have to lower the visuals to perhaps medium or low setting. And on very demanding games, you have to also lower down the resolution from say 1080p down to 720p. And then games are gonna have playable frame rates but it's not too bad. Now, if you want to see more gaming, then please check out my full detailed gaming review of the Mi Notebook Air 13, the 2018 model. Now, if you're looking to run Linux, if you've seen my unboxing, I tested that out and my touchpad was not working. I was running Manjaro 17.1.3. Now, the recently released 17.1.4 update I have now burnt that ISO to my USB pen drive here running a live image. And as you can see, the mouse cursor is working, so the touchpad now works, brightness control works, wireless, the sound, everything so far is working on here. So this is really good news for anyone that wants to run Linux on this machine. You won't have any problems. It runs it really well and very quick. 
So streaming in 4K is perfectly smooth and fine, no drop frames. Well, only three drop frames out of 3,500 here. The connection keeps up as long as, of course, you've got a fast enough connection to maintain that link and keep it buffering really well. But no problems. It will natively play your HEVC codecs as well, 10-bit, and very fast performance overall, multitasking, getting in around Windows, not an issue at all with the Core i5-8250. And finally a sample here from the webcam, so it's 720p 30 frames per second maximum that it can record. The quality is pretty average, now you hear a lot of echo, that's because I'm in a room that's almost empty, so that's the reason for that. But overall the mic quality is good, but the webcam, it's pretty average really, but it's decent enough for Skype calls. At the moment I'm in low light, so it's not exactly performing wonderful. Okay guys, so this is a step up clearly over the 2017 model. It's about 30% faster, comes with a better keyboard because of the new keycaps. It's black, so easy to see with the backlight versus the silver keys in the backlight so it can sometimes be a little bit hard to make out. Touchpad more or less is kind of the same, but slightly better because of the precision drivers. Our fingerprint reader works great. The screen looks great as well. It's very nice, fully laminated. They could have made it touch, but that's just my personal preference there. Build quality is excellent, it is a premium laptop. Now it falls short with battery life, you get around six hours, max five, six hours. It's not really that much more than the 2017 model. Now cooling has improved, but not by much. It's only four degrees to the touch cooler after a couple of hours of gaming on this. Now, one thing that bothers me in this is they've limited the performance. So they put single channel RAM, and it also starts to thermal throttle the CPU way earlier than the Pro model, and that limits the performance there as well. The GPU then has also been clocked a little lower than the 15.6 inch model, so that's about three areas there where they're limiting the performance. But the crazy thing is, this is priced exactly the same, or even a little bit higher at the time of this review, than the Mi Notebook Pro model, so I see absolutely no reason to go for this. So in my mind, skip this model, go for the Mi Notebook Pro because it has better cooling. It's got separate thermal heat pipes and fans for the GPU, for the CPU. A better keyboard, it's much better than this one. I do like typing on it a lot better. We also have a larger touchpad, which is just a little bit more comfortable to use. And then we have better battery life as well as one other thing. Now one area where it's not better than the 15.6 inch model is the screen. The screen, because it's not as sharp, that's really about it, and I feel that this one's got slightly better colors on it, so I prefer the screen in this model. That really is about the only thing and reason to go for it. So there's a lot of reasons to go for the 15.6 inch model because of that better performance. You can also increase the power limit on that one to get it to perform close to an i7 7700HQ. When you increase the power limit on this particular model because of the early thermal throttling, you get zero benefit out of it so you can't boost the performance so that again just adds the reason skip this if you can put up with a 15.6 inch extra size and the one kilo more of weight get the 15.6 inch model so with that said check out my review up here of the me notebook pro 15.6 inch model the i5 model and then the i7 model as well i have a review of that and thank you so much for watching this review here and if you're new, why not subscribe to the channel? I'll have plenty more up and coming, including reviews of more laptops in the near future. Bye for now.